Here we go again. Let's see what family we've got this week. Hi, I'm Jensie Williams. I'm a single mom and I have three children. Oh. The oldest one is Bradley. He's 12. My only girl is 10. Her name is Kelsey. And the youngest is Hagen and he's five. Can I get up? I work two jobs. I'm very, very busy, and my grandparents help me out quite a bit. Hi, I'm Granny. Hi, I'm Papa. We're the great grandparents. Dency, our granddaughter, depends on us. We take the children to school, and we take care of them till their mother gets off work. Well, get your, get all this. Get, okay. Yeah. I have to get all this. Since I am a single mom, it is very, very difficult to raise three kids on your own. Just get it. No! Kelsey K. If it wasn't for my grandparents, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. We'll see y'all later. Good luck. <laughs> <sighs> well, child, just stop, please! Bradley likes to start fights with his siblings. <gasps> he doesn't understand the word no. Where are you going? Get in here. Hagen has a horrible, horrible temper. <gasps> no! I'm killing you. When Hagen gets in trouble, he takes his anger out on me. Mom, watch out! Or one of the kids. He usually goes to blows with me. <gasps> oh, oh my. sit down! Lay down! Do something! Stay in here! Kelsey, she makes trouble happen. Shut up. Come put these books up. No! I've told you a hundred times today, Kelsey. Good for you. Ooh, little miss attitude. It's horrible being a single mom, being controlled by my kids. Ideally, I would love to handle my children, but it's impossible. <gasps> One of y'all are fixing to get hurt. No, no, no. Jensi, uh, I don't know how she can make it on her own. I really don't. I can't do this. Please, Super Nanny. I am begging and pleading with you. Come in and show me how to hold my ground and to keep my kids from fighting so much. Mom, you're falling apart the seams and um, I'm on my way. I'm so nervous. I've waited for this for so long. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh. Well, that's a great welcome. Oh. <laughs> oh, welcome. When Joe first rang the doorbell, I was so overwhelmed with emotion. It was something that I've been looking forward to for a very, very long time. Hi, how old are you, Kelsey? Ten. Ten, pleased to meet you. And you are? Bradley. Hi, Bradley, pleased to meet you, Jojo. Hi. <laughs> hey, can come out. Peter. Come and say hi. Well, shake my hand. Jojo, pleased to meet you. How old are you? Five. Just after I arrived, the cheerful mood in the house didn't last for long. And I got a chance to see that temper that Mum said Hagen had when she asked him to come in from riding his skateboard. Get inside. Why not? When Hagen doesn't get his way, he goes crazy. Open the door, Hagen. Hey, you. Why do you hate me? You're being me. No, I'm not being me. Yeah, you are. Very interesting Hi. how Mum feeds the fire here. He's walked away and she's followed him. I don't know why. You still can't ride it. I'm running away. Where are you going to run away to? Who <laughs> cares? That's a pretty big threat from a five-year-old. <laughs> Stop! Right now! When Hagen's going off, I don't know what to do. Uh, the frustration, the, it skyrockets. Get out, of my room. Get out of my room and go in there. That's it. Quit <laughs> acting like that! Ouch! <laughs> I think Jen C has got to a point where she just loses her patience. Her child hits her, and in anger, she just smacks him back. Stop and it's it. just You're fire saying. with fire. It's not resolving a situation in a positive way. Quit being me, damn it! After dealing with Hagen's temper tantrum, Mum wanted Kelsey to clean her own room, but she didn't really take to the idea. Kelsey, go do something with that room. Mm -mm. Go clean your room. No. Kelsey. No. 
Kelsey smart mouths and sasses off to me all the time. Go clean your room. No. Yes. Let go of me. Kelsey. No, Mama. Oh, I hate you. Kelsey gave Mum some real attitude, but what came next was unbelievable for a 10-year-old. Oh, my word. I couldn't believe the drama. There was Kelsey having this emotional meltdown fit for a four-year-old. I don't know what to tell you. I hate you. You know I'm starving to death. If you were starving to death, Kelsey, then you eat what was in there. When Kelsey didn't get her way with the food, it made me feel like a horrible mother because my 10-year-old is throwing such a huge fit. I'm starving. Why can't I have something to eat? You can have something to eat, but you've got to calm down and come in the kitchen and get it. Well, Jensie's obviously pandered to this behavior before. I mean, ridiculous, you know, that's life. Sometimes things don't go the way you want them, and it's important for children to recognize that. Come on. I hadn't been in the house very long, but all I had seen was Jensie continuously fighting with the kids. So I really wanted to pull her aside and find out how she really deals with this all. What's going on? What's going on in your head? It's just so hard on me. And they just make it harder and harder every day. Every day. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I can't wait to get to work. <laughs> Jensie told me that she'd rather be at work than at home with her own kids. I can clearly see that she's at the end of her rope. I don't like their hatred and their anger towards me when all I do is work, 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 you know, and give them everything they want. So what about you then? What about me? I saw I saved my point. So what about you? I don't have time to think of myself. It's hard, but I do it for them. Being a single mom is the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. I don't want to be somebody that is always upset or sad. So you've got no life, and you work in two jobs, and no one's happy. Yeah, pretty much. Later on, Kelsey pulled me aside, and she showed me this poem that she had wrote with all the things that she wanted me to help her family with. Why I want Super Nanny to come. My mum needs the help. She cries when we help. When we help. We will not fight. It will be a peaceful night. We will have our manners. And the end, there will be ba banners. <laughs> My mum will listen to what I say. I will be surprised that day. We will play together. I wish we could do this forever. What do you think is the most important thing there in what you've written? The first one. Why is that? Because when we fight, she cries, and I hate it. And then I start crying, and my brother starts crying. And... I was rather taken back. It's the first time that a child has ever come to me with this desperate cry-out list of what they wanted me to do to help their family. And that's pretty heavy. If all of that happened, you'd be one happy girl, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm? And that's a good thing. Keep that right there. OK. Every day before Jensie goes to work, she drops all of her kids off to her grandparents' house, who are in their 70s, and then she picks them up afterwards once she's finished work. So I really wanted to meet them because I wanted to find out about their role in Jensie's life. They're super needy. <laughs> Hello, sir. Pleased to meet you. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well. The first time I saw Joe, I was thrilled to death to see her because I felt like that we're finally going to get some relief. Pleased to meet yeah. you. How are you? Hi. So good. After such a lovely warm welcome from Hal and Carolyn, I got a real good chance to see exactly how those kids behave. It's like night and day from their own home. Would you go in there and shut the front door, please? Go run. Things are very calm here at grandma and grandpops, and there is a contrast here with regards to respect. And there isn't any conflict or confrontation. It's just very easy going and relaxed here, which is very different to back at home. Here it comes. Safe. <laughs> Are you a good boy? These kids have a great level of respect for Jensie's grandparents, yet they don't have it for their own mother. So I wanted to ask Hal and Carolyn why they thought that was. Do you think Jensie's too soft with the kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, she doesn't discipline them like she should. The kids act a lot better at our house, we think, than uh, when they're with their mother at her house. But Joe, what worries us is our, our age, you know. Like, for example, if we weren't here. Yeah. I don't know how she would make it. <laughs> God forbid anything happened to... Right. The pair of you two, right? Yes. It gets a little uh, tough on us being as old as we are, and we can't take a lot of stuff that we used to take when we were younger. We feel like it's our responsibility. All right. Okay, well, that's given me a more understanding of where you guys are in, in the picture of all of this. And you're definitely in the middle. <laughs> you're definitely in the middle. <laughs> yes. As soon as we got back to Jensie's house, Mum tried to get dinner on the go, but the kids were just at each other's throats, fighting with one another, and the bad behaviour had started all over again. Give me the ball. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> What'd you just do to Bradley? I kicked him. <laughs> Where? Uh, oh, there. Healthy. Brother and sisterly love? Not. That's... As far as I'm concerned, they do not have respect for one another and they need to find it. Kelsey, seriously, I'm don't. I'm get my heelys on. Don't. And with the older siblings fighting, they didn't set a good example for little Hagen and he joined in as well. Don't throw the ball. No. Nice game. Be easy. Well, to watch my three children fight like they do with such anger and hostility. No, it's just stop. horrible to watch. You were 12 years old. How old is Hagen? Seven. Stop it. That's enough. Stop. Stop it. Ow! Oh, stop it. No. No. <laughs> stop it, you guys. Stop. Jensie's just overwhelmed. I mean, three to one. And these kids, they don't listen to a thing she says. What do you think of this situation right now? I hate it. You it's hate too much chaos. You don't want Super Nanny to be here. Yes, no. I do. Jensie gets no respect from her kids. They don't listen to her. She has no means in being able to control the kids' bad behaviour. It's no wonder she'd rather be at work and leave the kids with her grandparents. We need to sit down and talk ASAP. You know, Jensie, you're an incredibly lucky woman to have the support of your grandparents. Mm -hmm. But where is the mum? Where is the authority figure here? Because I don't see her. Let's talk about Hagen's temper. How have you for so long tolerated that behaviour from your five-year-old son? I just do. That's got to stop. Kelsey and her attitude towards you. You tell her to do something, she's like, I ain't doing that. I don't want to. <laughs> it's Kelsey. <laughs> I know. And as for Bradley, he does what he wants as well. But that's because none of your children have any respect for you because they see you lacking respect for yourself. Because let me tell you something, Jensie, if you had respect for yourself, trust me, you wouldn't allow anybody to treat you the way your kids treat you. Let me tell you what I have seen from your children. I've seen them attentive, loving, considerate. But you know where I saw that all? At your grandparents' house. I want to discuss your grandparents' involvement in this because as family they have been there for you and given you that support definitely but what it's done it's created a cycle that's become destructive really with regards to the dependency we thought we could help out by taking care of the kids and whatever we had to do we still want to do that but, but in a in a different way, to where she can become self-sufficient, do what she's supposed to do, and uh, do it good enough to help the kids and to help us. Jensie, what happens when they're no longer here anymore? We worry about that, don't we, hun? Yeah. I don't know. They're my wife. 
I don't have a backup. What about you? What about you standing on your own two feet? You don't want to step up and do that. Yes, I do want to step up and do that. I just don't know how to. That's why I need you here to help me. You've relied on making everybody make the decisions for you instead of you doing them. You are the mother. And being that mother means that you need to start making decisions, being responsible for those decisions and accountable for whatever that impact is afterwards. Is enough enough for you now? Yes, definitely. Are you glad to hear that? Yes. <laughs> I don't think there was anything that Joe said that really shocked us. I'm just glad that she had the nerve to tell Jency the way it should be. So, are we ready? I'm ready. OK, let's get to work. The biggest issue I see with the Williams family is that there is a major lack of consistency. When it comes to respect, the kids are really good with Jency's grandparents, but not with their own mother. So it's time to get them all on the same page. First, we need to establish some rules. OK, these are the house rules. As you can see, there's nothing on them. You know why? Because they've not been written down. Now, I know all three of you are smart enough to know the difference between right and wrong and what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. And so what I'm going to do is encourage you to actually come forth with what you feel some of those rules should be. I don't know about these rules business. Bradley. What do you think should be a house rule up there? No back talking. No name calling. No bad words. Say yes, man, or no, ma'am. No fighting. I'm gonna make one up. You have to pick up after yourself. We'll see. Bradley. It shocked me. Hmm. They know what the rules are, but they don't obey them. <laughs> You're very clearly showing me that you actually know how to behave, so it's gonna be a breeze. I don't know about these two. Jensie's a single mum holding down two jobs. And when she's at home, the kids don't help out at all. So I want to show Jensie a really creative way of allowing her kids to step up and take on some responsibilities. We're fishing for chores. And the way you do that is to be blindfolded and then fish for two chores. Two. A day to do. First thing that came to my mind was, gee, I write. Yeah, right. My kids will never do that. Kelsey, I'm going to let you choose first. So you get what you get. Okay. Lower. Lower it down. Fishy. You okay, almost got fishy. it. OK, what's it say? Empty dishwasher. Say what? Say what? What's that? <laughs> Empty dishwasher. This is just a really simple way to get your kids to help out. Okay. It's fun, easy, and it doesn't cost a penny. What you got? Fold and sort clothes. <laughs> For, OK, that's your chore. That's just my luck. <laughs> oh, you got one. Thank you. <laughs> the fun part about fishing for chores is my mom just don't tell me what to do. It's just a wild guess, and it's just fun what you get. <laughs> you got one. Yeah, yeah. Take out trash. <laughs> Take out trash. <laughs> OK. Go ahead. After they were done fishing for their chores, they got right on it. Are they clean? And it shocked me. I mean, it laid me out flat. I just could not believe it. Here, Mom. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, because it, it, at one time, we're having fun with it, and it's helping out. I can sit back and just relax for once while the kids are doing the dirty work. <laughs> So when we empty the trash... Put them in a bag. Correct. You know, it's pretty amazing. Jensie couldn't get these kids to lift a finger. And now they're helping out and they're having fun too. There's an awful lot of fighting that goes on in this house. But I wanted to show Jensie that if she could get the two older kids working together as a positive force, then it would help the whole family. And I had an idea how to get the process started. What I would like to do is to give you both something to do together, a creative challenge, because what I would like to see is how well you both work together. Kelsey loves to write. What 12-year-old boy doesn't love music? So I thought, together, we could come up with a song. Is that the only beat you can't have? Dude made food. 
do? Yeah. It rhymes, don't it? No. Oh, well, this is going to be interesting. With the audience, OK? Kelsey and Bradley trying to take it easy. Nine and good rapper. Kelsey <laughs> got her Barbies, and yeah, she does. She's playing with them all day. No, I'm not. Having fun. <laughs> it really surprised me that me and Bradley got along. It's all, all right. right. <laughs> <You're> it. <right. laughs> <laughs> The rap Bradley and Kelsey came up with was, it was funny. To see both of their ideas together, you know, it was just an amazing feeling. Okay, let's keep the beat going then. Slow it down. I'm here with the children, rapping so loud. Bradley likes a slam dunk and Kelsey writes so proud. Hagen's got his Lincoln logs. Mama's got her rules up. I had fun working with my sister and bonding with her because it made us both happy. Did you have fun? Yeah, that's cool. Exactly. It's not always about being opposite from one another. Sometimes it's about working together as well. I didn't know you can rap. <laughs> I'm glad the kids had a laugh, though. I mean, I certainly won't be giving up my day job in a heartbeat, but we had some fun. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon, I wanted to work with Kelsey and Bradley, so Mum arranged to have Hagen picked up by her grandparents. I'm not going to Granny! Hagen, come in here. I'm not going to Granny! He didn't want to go. He thought he was missing out on something. And he started to have a temper tantrum. And I was waiting for Jensie to give him a warning. Come here. Hagen, get inside. But no, it didn't happen. And I had to step in and give him a warning for her. This is a warning. Hagen, you come inside the house right now, otherwise you'll be on the spot. Hagen ran in, but then he ran straight back out again. But this time, Jensie knew exactly what to do, and she put him straight on that naughty spot. <laughs> Come on, you're going on the spot. Sit right there. Daddy, Do not Mom. hit me. He's on the spot right now, so don't talk to him. When Hell arrived, it was so important that he didn't interfere with discipline because Jensie needs to do this all on her own and she can't be overruled by her grandfather all the time. <laughs> Sit right there. He started running outside and I had to chase him everywhere. It was horrible. Come on, don't talk to him. <laughs> Do not hit me. It's really tough to sit back. I was tempted to uh, go after Hagen, but I knew that I should let Jensie do that. Curing control, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Finally, after almost an hour, Hagen realized he wasn't going to win this one. You're not being confrontational. You're in control. You're composed and you're dealing with it. Who's in control? Stop, stop, stop. Me. <laughs> it felt great to follow through because he finally did sit on the spot. And it made me feel like, hey, <laughs> I got power. Look at me. What? I placed you in the naughty spot because you ran away from me. I'm I want so an apology. Sorry. I'm sorry. Give me a hug and kiss. He gave her a kiss, told her he loved her, and I was absolutely shocked. This was the first time that Jensie has ever stepped up and disciplined by herself. And I was so glad that Hell saw that, so now he can go back and tell Carolyn so that they don't have to do it anymore because she can do it by herself. That was good. <laughs> With Hagen off at Jensie's grandparents' house, I really wanted to focus now on the lack of communication between Jensie and the two older kids. This is my little technique for this afternoon is from the heart. It's really just you getting an insight of your kids' hearts and what they've been feeling and what they've been thinking and, and just having more of an understanding. And I can't stress enough how important it is to keep communication solid. I set up a situation where the kids would be talking to me and they knew that mum would be in the bedroom watching on a monitor. For now, I felt this situation would be a very comfortable one for Kelsey and Bradley because it would allow them to freely express how they were feeling. What good things have you seen happen with Mum? Like, what changes have you seen that have been really positive? She don't lose her temper. Yeah. She don't hit spank us. Yeah. What about you, Kelsey? What's been difficult for you in communicating and talking to Mum? Like, if something's going on at school or something. Yeah. yeah. And she'll like, it'll be okay. She won't fix it. She'll just say, it'll be okay. And 
Right, so that makes you feel like she's not really hearing what you're saying? No, she's just saying, you know, she's busy. What do you think could make that better, then? Uh, take a little bit of her time out from the schedule. Jo wanted me to hear what the kids had to say because she wanted to show me that the kids do have emotions and feelings, and I don't hear what they have to say. I think it's really important that you have that relationship, you know, yeah. with your mum, to be able to just tell her what's yeah, yeah. on your mind, you know? Yeah, yeah. I say it all the time, but it's amazing how much you learn about your kids when you actually just take the time to sit down and talk to them. What made it easy to talk to me, Kelsey? Because... You know, to tell me things. Because you listen. I want to be able to be there for them and communicate with them, and I want to show them that they can come to me with anything, and they can trust me. Unfortunately, I do see the Williams kids fight all the time. But I truly believe that a lot of that comes from where they're bored and they don't know what to do. So I wanted to show the family how easy it was to come up with just a few simple creative ideas of how they could all enjoy themselves together. So in a nutshell, Mum doesn't have to yell at them all the time. So whilst dinner's cooking, let's play a family game together. OK. We don't have a lot of family time together. We're usually fighting or yelling or something. We're going to play a very simple game. Who am I? The topic's going to be animals. What are you going to do? Okay. You're going to write an animal's name and then you can stick it on Jensie's forehead, watching them all stick animals on each other's forehead. That was fun. Grandma with a tiger on her forehead was quite fun. Does my animal eat bananas? Yes. Does my animal eat pears? No. no. Does my animal have four legs? Yes. <laughs> Does my animal have fur? No. It doesn't. Is my animal a dog? Yes. <laughs> the Who Am I game made all of us happy because we are laughing together and just having fun. It just shows, you know, a pen and a paper, a couple of games, what a difference it made. It created such a warm, cosy atmosphere in the Williams household for the first time. Now that Jensie's well on her way and very much more in control of her family, I'm going to leave her for a few days. But this time, she's really going to be on her own. I'm taking Grandma and Grandpa with me. We're going to go have some fun for three days. <laughs> it's so important for us to see Jensie be able to stand up on her own. And one of our uh, biggest worries is how Jensie is going to survive without us. Bye. Bye. Without having anybody there to lean on, this is going to be a real challenge for Gen C. So I really just hope she remembers everything she's been taught. Gen C has completely been on her own for a few days, raising her children without my help or her grandparents. So, yes, I'm curious to see how she's got on. How have you two been? <laughs> we have been great. Right. It was nice, Joe. Yeah. And how did you get on? Great. So, are you ready to take a look at the footage that I have? Uh, yeah. The first clip we are going to see is you praising. Looking good, sister. Cool. Very hey. good. You're doing a great job. Good job. And we're having, like, a puzzle collection. Cool. Y'all yeah. did really good. I'm proud of y'all. What are you doing? Cleaning out my closet. Well, I'm proud of you. This is very encouraging to see because it is something new mm -hmm. that you are doing and it's allowing the children to really just embrace that mm -hmm. and feel very confident about that and know that they actually are getting your approval for what they're doing because you're verbally giving them lots of praise. Are y'all fighting? No, we're just playing around. Well, this is your morning <laughs> for fighting. Mom! <laughs> You're on the spot. You need to leave him alone. <gasps> you are on the spot for fighting. <laughs> Don't hit mommy. Then mommy, get up. You're going to be here for a very long time. You do not fight me. Down. So, your first 
step of reinforcing discipline, mm -hmm. you adopted the voice and you went in firm, but how was Hagen meant to take you seriously when there was no eye contact and you weren't even on his level? Well, apparently he didn't take me seriously. Exactly. So once he was in his spot, he hit you and you walked away, but you couldn't ignore him. You had to get the last bit in. And you said to him, you will not hit me. What are you meant to do when the child's on the spot? Leave him alone, ignore him. You've got it. Kelsey! Mama! It's 15 minutes. Mom! Mom, help! <laughs> 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 Kelsey, oh, I've got it. My video, look there. <laughs> Ma! Ma! Oh, oh, he, he did that. Damn. Sit down. So now we've got Kelsey screaming out, Mum, do something. And we've got Bradley taking over. So he drags Hagen by the ears, it looked like there, back to on the spot. Now your kids are involved in discipline because they're losing the faith in what you're meant to be delivering. They need to recognise that they can trust you. And the way they're going to trust you is for you to have the strength to deliver consequence and feel OK about that. And that stems from you believing in yourself, which means that we need to concentrate today on building that self-esteem okay. so that when I leave, I know you're hearing my voice, and you're believing in yourself and you're walking forward. So are we ready to do some more work? Yes. Good, okay, brilliant. Ah, hello. hello. You have a dead tree? I have a tree that is uh, a bit lifeless, isn't it? Yeah. When I first arrived at Jensie's house, I was very aware of how little praise mm -hmm. and encouragement she gave the kids. But since I've been working with her, I've seen she's really tried hard to change that. So I have a little surprise to show them all exactly how much she has. This tree here really represents Mum's praise in the house. How much praise did Mum give you before I turned up? That much. Mum didn't really give us a lot of praise before. When I first arrived, I said to you, I want you to be consciously aware of how much praise you give the kids. And you said to me, OK, Joe, I'm going to start to do that. Throughout our time, I've been making a mental note of just how much you did praise the kids. And so I want to show you visually how much that was. <laughs> it was great to see how much I did praise the kids. I didn't realise that I had praised them so much. There are <laughs> over 20 <laughs> hands of praise oh, here. They all have what you were praised for. Bradley. Singing, dishes. Hagen, playing well. Bradley, finish the puzzle. Give this tree some life and put these branches on there. Look at all these hands. Wow. You've earned these. These are your praises. It was great to hang them on the tree. It's so beautiful. The tree was so visual for the kids. And I just hope that Gen C continues to give the kids praise and encouragement and that tree continues to blossom. Oh, look at you, look at all these, look. I was very proud of myself, seeing the kids go through their handprints and seeing what all good things Mommy said about them. It was really, it was a neat moment. Isn't that beautiful to see? I mean, just look. I mean, it goes to show you what your children need. I'll stick them on there. Before I left, Jen C had spoke to me about how much she felt she had personally grown through this experience. And because of that, she had something very special that she wanted to share with her grandparents. I know there is something that you want to read to your grandparents. I just wanted to start off by saying thank you for everything you've done for me and the kids. We wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the love and support that you've gave us. You shouldn't worry about any decisions that I make or choices that I make for me and my kids. I can handle it all from now on. It felt very good to hear Jancy say those words. Just support anything I do and feel good about it. I am a changed woman and mother now. It really 
struck a, a note down in here, you know, and it really made us feel good. I love you guys more than anything, and thank you for allowing me to stand on my own two feet. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, we love you. We we'll love you too. When Jency read us that letter, it made us appreciate everything that we've done for Jency. Can I say something? Yes. You may. I don't know what we would have done without you. I really mean that. And I know now why they call you Super Nanny. <laughs> because you are super, and we love you for it. Yeah, it was amazing seeing Papa cry. I just, my grandfather doesn't cry at all. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm going now. I'm going. Up there. Oh, I'm going to miss you so much. Oh, I'm going to miss you too. Come on, give me a big hug. I'm gonna remember Jojo forever and ever. Just in my heart and soul. Jen, see, take care. Right take care, you take care of yourself. <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, yeah. Keep up the work that you've been doing, okay? Remember that you need to find that strength, okay? For yourself first. Take care, Carolyn. My dog. <laughs> take care, Hal. Okay. We learned to uh, really appreciate Jo. And she just felt like one of the family. I mean, it's like you've known her all your life. Give me a big hug. Give me a big hug. Give me a big hug. Let me give you a big hug. <laughs> because of Joe, we're a great family now. Joe's an awesome lady. Mm, I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too. I'll miss you too. Just because I'm not here in your house, it doesn't mean that you can't keep in touch with me and let me know how you're getting on. I love you, Joe, and I want to thank you. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Okay. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. She is just one remarkable woman. I never thought somebody could come in for such a short amount of time and mean so much to us. Take care. Thank you for so much. Everything. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I feel really proud of Jency. There's been a lot of positive progress here. She's matured. She's learned to take charge and raise her family with authority, but with fairness. And I feel because of that, the whole family are going to benefit, not just Gen C, not just her kids, but the grandparents as well. Mark, set, go. <laughs> I'm very proud of my family. We've come a long way. The kids are treating each other great. I mean, it's like they're all buddies now. What up? Jency, I can see that she has a lot more confidence. That'll be easy. Really? I'm there for my kids now, and before I wasn't. Hey. Good. I have a backbone now. You're not doing it in the street. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say no and worry about it hurting their feelings. You're getting pretty good at this. It's absolutely great to see Jency in control of her kids. That's enough. That's enough. It's a burden that's been taken off us, and uh, we enjoy it. Four letter word for partner. The most important thing in the world to me is my kids. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm giving my kids a chance of happiness and a better future.